Greetings YouTube. Today's video is about a subject that has occurred in the news recently, at least in the news I read, and that is secondary liability. Many of you are probably asking yourself right now, what the hell is secondary liability? Let me give you an example. Let's say I posted a YouTube video. Surprising, right? And that video I made statements of fact, or hell, they could be opinion, for all it's going to matter for the example, but let's say I made statements of fact that were defamatory. Um, and I'll discuss de defamation in another video. But uh, the idea, normally what would happen is the person I defamed to get re resolution if I was not going to pull down the video when he asks, would sue me. But I have nothing. I've got a 91 Toyota. It's got no value. So what are they, uh, what's, what's he going to get out of suing me? Um, he'll get a court order for it to take him down, but why don't he, why doesn't he sue YouTube instead? Google's got a lot of money. And so he can sue for damages and actually recover a significant amount of damages. That is called secondary liability. And thankfully, the section 230 of the Communications Decency Act uh, provides immunity to uh, what are called interactive service providers. Uh, YouTube is like that. Anyone who uh, hosts user-generated content is an interactive service provider. Um, and in those cases, they can't be held responsible for the uh, actions of their users. This is a cornerstone of law. It's basically saying you can't hold uh, a person responsible for the actions of another. Um, you can... Section 230 of the CDA doesn't apply to copyright. Um, it has its own... Um, it's got its own safe harbor. Uh, and it doesn't apply to, um, to times when the site owner or his representative um, makes takes an action um, or collaborates with a user to make a certain action. Uh, that's when you can breach the veil and get at the site holder. Um, our entire user generated universe, Facebook, YouTube, um, blogging sites, uh, not blogging sites, but uh, things like WordPress. Um, so, so yeah, blogging sites um, don't wouldn't really exist if it weren't for that protection. People, however, don't like it. Uh, notably, many state attorney generals. Um, why don't they like it? Because finding the person behind content is hard. It generally requires you go to, you go before a court, prove that the person has committed whatever wrong uh, they've actually committed, so you can get them to cough up the info, um, so you can get the the internet provider to cough up the info on who actually. Uh, said this speech that they weren't supposed to say. A lot of hard work all around. A lot of work all around. I'm not necessarily hard work. But it's a lot of work. It's really easy, though, to sue Google. Or if you're a... Um, for instance, you're a classified site and someone posts a... Uh, and someone makes an illegal posting um, 
people say they, they post about drugs. It's a lot easier to sue the classified site than to sue the user. <clears throat> and so, uh, um, this also comes about because people like to be able to to uh, law enforcement and, and the attorney general likes to be able to crow about all of about his big settlement he reached with company X or the big verdict against company X saying I brought down you know sa saying I brought down Joe Schmo um, on, a, on a trafficking charge doesn't really fund the election cycle. So there's a lot of politics behind this. Um, and some might say that uh, perhaps Craigslist could... Um, the subject I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about right now... That. Screw that. Um, some might say that... Craigslist or Redbook or whatever site you're on has a duty to actively scan these and try to weed out the illegal ones. That's a really, really bad idea. Automated content filters always to get them to, if they're ever legally required, to fulfill the legal requirements will always overblock. Um, because there's only two ways to block. You can either block a site or you can block um, key terms. And if you're blocking key terms, if you're blocking sites, you're going to miss a site that you need to do a blocked. Or, or you're going to, in this case, uh, an ad. You're going to miss a you know, if you're blocking specific ads, you really can't do that. There's too many of them. So you have to block key terms. And you're always going to get a good, you're always going to get good in with the bad, especially once people start using code words to describe their content, what what's actually being talked about in the ad. Um, there's no way to get to get it all. But even if they could, should they? Mm, I don't think so. Um, we have enshrined the idea of freedom of speech. That means protecting all speech. That it there are some exceptions. But those are very specific exceptions. Um, you can't um, just create new exceptions as you wish. Uh, and so there's a lot of problems with the blocking, with, with having a, a website block. But we, we want user-generated content providers to be open platforms. Once you start restricting any type of speech um, that isn't a previously unprotected speech, you open the door for more speech restrictions. Moreover, the content providers should in no way be held responsible for the actions of their users. Uh, there was a big complaint because there was a decision made in a traf in a um, in a case about someone who trafficked the favors of women, uh, and they were not being and they were not consenting to these uh, to providing these favors. <sighs> the users sued the classified ad company for hosting those ads. And the court ruled that just because we want someone 
you know, you have this vague desire that someone should be held accountable, um, that isn't enough to hold to to hold uh, to hold the classified site responsible. Um, notably, in that case, all of the actual perpetrators, that is to say, all of the people, all of the uh, all of the ringleaders of those actions were jailed. Uh, they have all been convicted of a crime. And if there was a civil restitution that the victims wanted to receive, that's who they should be going after. They don't want to go after the people who are in jail because they don't have much with which to provide civil restitution. So it makes for a very... it You can sue... But why bother? And that's the problem. They're not suing because this because the ad site is responsible. The ad site isn't responsible for what happened to them. What happened to them is horrible. And I would never want it to happen to anyone I know. I would never want it to happen to anyone. At all. But the people who actually committed the crime, the people who are actually responsible, are in jail. The website, which did not collaborate, encourage, um, or try to get more of these trafficking ads on its site, is in no way responsible. That is secondary liability, and it's very dangerous. You start opening up to things like blaming Ford because the bank robbers drove away in a Ford. Did you do that? No. But that's what secondary liability is. So in the future, when you hear about these kinds of cases, think about them and realize, should the person being sued, be held responsible. Just a thought.